Hello and welcome. This is Shiggy talking about one of Jan's latest math hacks. In this video, you will discover a simple trick that creates one of the simplest generators of random looking numbers derived from the Fibonacci sequence. First, what is a PRNG? A pseudo random number generator, as the name implies, is an algorithm that generates a sequence of numbers that look random. This means that the consecutive numbers do not seem to have an obvious correlation. However, if you carefully examine the sequence, you could still recover the algorithm and predict the next values. This class of algorithms is not meant to be purely or perfectly random. A different kind of system is required to provide a truly random output suitable for secure applications. On the contrary, a PRNG is fully deterministic. This means that the sequence can be replayed if you know the complete state of the algorithm. This is a desired feature in many scientific and engineering techniques such as simulations or data transmission. Ideally, the larger the internal state or number of variables in the algorithm, the more bits are processed, the more random the output sequence looks, and the more steps it takes for the sequence to wrap around and replay from the beginning. In theory, every bit added to the internal state should double the length of the generated sequence. The discovery of the PEAC, or peak generator, comes from the research into practical systems where speed and simplicity are essential, in particular with checksums. But it also shakes the belief that PRNGs require multiplications, divisions, or some sort of prime number. Let's see why this matters so much. These days, the most classic PRNG is called LFSR, or Linear Feedback Shift Register. This incredibly simple circuit implements so-called binary polynomial multiplications of a generator number, which is equivalent to a prime number over the finite binary polynomial field. Another widespread family of random number generators called Linear Congruential Generators, or LGC, simply multiplies and adds integers by a constant prime number or some other magic values. Compared to addition, multiplication and division are considered costly as they consume more time and electronic circuits. This increases the cost and reduces the performance. Furthermore, the choice of a prime number or generator polynomial for LFSRs often requires a lot of research. We will see that none of these heavy or delicate ingredients are required with the method explained in this video. Let's now go back to the basics and consider the Fibonacci sequence this ridiculously famous algorithm where each new number is merely the sum of two previous numbers. This creates an exponential sequence which grows with a ratio called the golden ratio, or phi, a transcendental number equal to 1.6 and many, many digits we don't really care about. The golden ratio is shown in the left column, where the successive values converge. Phi is also available on the xy diagram as the slope of the successive points. Now consider this. Since transcendental numbers are made of an infinite sequence of non-repeating digits, the existence of a transcendental constant arising from pure additions lets us hope that additions should be enough to generate suitable sequences of random-looking integers. If this was the case, though, generations of mathematicians should have noticed long ago and it would be the standard method today. Wikipedia mentions algorithms with some inspiration from Fibonacci, but they do not seem to directly rely on the Fibonacci sequence. Marsiglia, in particular, has created a family of PRNGs called lagged Fibonacci, but he focused on extremely long periods with way too many small variables. For certain applications, though, we desire as few variables as possible. So, what is the catch? 250 years ago, the Fibonacci sequence was studied in modular arithmetics. That means modulo, a given integer. In other words, all operations truncate the numbers when the results exceed the modulus. This is called the Pisano sequence because Fibonacci came from Pisa. The results and behaviors are also well known, and we will look at the Pisano sequence modulo 16 because we computer geeks love powers of 2. One interesting property is that powers of 2 create a sequence with a length equal to 1 and a half the modulo. For modulo 16, this means that the Pisano sequence loops after 24 steps as the algorithm shows. The XY plot looks pretty evenly spaced, but the number of points is ridiculously low. Conclusion. The Pisano sequences can't be used in practice because the result will be very bad. Yet, it contains the seeds for a better system. Let's now look at how computers add numbers. 
Computers usually work with words of 8, 16, 32, or 64 bits, which are added by a circuit called, wait for it, an adder. Whoops, no, not a snake, the other adder, the, the electronic circuit. Okay, okay. As you can expect, it features a couple of inputs for the addends X and Y, one output for the sum, and... Mathematicians often forget about these because they love natural numbers, but binary adders can have one carry-in and one carry-out signal. Voila! Give these signals some love because they will save our day. Inside a computer, these signals usually come for free but are mostly overlooked. We're going to put them to work right now. What we're now going to study is called end around carry. This is an old practice used in some early computers to manage a long obsolete binary number format. This is extremely simple. When a carry is generated, the carry is re-injected in the result with another addition or increment circuit. When you change such additions, the trick is to explicitly use the carry and signal in the next step to avoid using a separate incrementer. Because the carry signal is now separate, it is now explicitly part of the system state, so this is subtly but significantly different from a modulo operation. As you can guess, this trick will solve the problem we had with the Pisano sequence. And now let's put these elements together to build the PEAC algorithm, Pisano and end around carry. We already know that the Pisano sequence length is ridiculously short. One way of understanding PEAC is that from time to time the sequence is derailed to another of the many sequences that are not yet used. This is performed naturally by the adding circuit, as seen before, whose carry-out signal is re-injected in the carry-in input for the next cycle. This means that every time the adder overflows, the next result will receive an offset of 1. A first look will conclude that this is equivalent to a modulo n-1, as is often used by algorithms such as Fletcher's checksum but the carry value is now separate, and this makes the new system a modulo n plus 1. Indeed, the xy diagram is now 17 dots high because it represents the previous value plus the carry, 16 plus 1 is 17, while the width is still 16 dots. And it works very well for the modulo 16 case, as shown in this example. Our algorithm loops after 135 iterations instead of only 24. It even covers one half of the whole surface, with no significant clumping. The other half is covered by a symmetrical sequence. The diagram indeed shows symmetries in the black and white squares. For a given modulo n, we get a sequence length of half of n squared plus n minus 1, which is way better than 1.5 times n. But wait, compared to the other types of pseudo-random number generators, all of this is created by a single adder circuit where the carry output is simply routed to the carry input. Let's now see how it works for various widths. In these pictures, each color represents an independent repeating sequence or orbit. For a practical system, we want the longest orbit possible. So we seek images where only green and blue are present, meaning there are only two orbits. This is the case for widths of 2, 3, 4, 10 and 16 bits. Most other widths have much more sequences, often with varying lengths. Larger widths get much harder to compute. Each increase of 1 quadruples the number of possible states. Width 26 is a very strong candidate, but has not been confirmed yet because it requires huge computations, 2 to the power of 52 cycles. What is at stake now is to map the structure of width 32 because it is a very common size for computer data. If a width of 32 has sufficiently few orbits, the corresponding algorithm will process data twice faster than with the width of 16 bits. This would be awesome. However, proving this case will require more than 16 billion billion iterations. Work on this is still going.
At this point, you should have seen how the Fibonacci sequence can be turned into a rather good PRNG with only a little programming trick. There is no magic number to carefully select and no complex operation. The only drawback is that not all sizes are equal. Only some sizes satisfy our needs and the search for new ones continues. The PEAC algorithm can be turned into a very fast electronic circuit, limited only by the speed of the adder. In software, generating one number takes only four basic instructions, where half of them could execute in parallel. Of course, it is highly linear, so it can't be used in cryptography or wherever security is needed. Don't build your online casino on this. However, it is a compelling basis for checksums where PEAC can replace Fletcher's algorithm with minimal adaptation. In some cases, PEAC could even replace CRCs based on LFSRs. Many details have been omitted to keep this video short, and they deserve much more in-depth explanations. If you want to learn more, check back on this channel and follow the project logs on hackaday.io. Stay tuned for more theory and the eventual validation of W26 and W32. As always, thanks to all the great people who contribute to this research and this video.